हेलो स्टूडेंट्स जय हिंद एंड वेलकम बैक टू दिस सेशन इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट इज हाउ टू प्रिपेयर द एंसर्स शॉर्ट एंसर्स एंड लॉन्ग एंसर्स एंड फॉर दैट पर्पज वी आर गोइंग टू सी सम शॉर्ट एंसर क्वेश्चन एंड लॉन्ग एंसर क्वेश्चन वॉट थिंग वी नीड टू कीप इन माइंड वाइल एंसरिंग दैम यू नो दैट इन योर क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन you are asked some questions uh, the questions are for 10 marks these are the question like answer the following questions in 30 to 40 words you will be asked six questions out of that you have to answer five and uh, you will get 10 marks for that now it is a very challenging thing to score 10 on 10 and after that you know that question number 10 and 11 these are the two questions for eight marks each these are also based on uh, your literature and uh, you need to solve them uh, properly now it's time to learn how to answer the questions so there are some points we need we're going to discuss here so first thing understanding the lesson is very important you need to understand all the twists and turns of the lessons all the characters their behavior why they behave like that why they act like that why they change like that so all these things you need to remember so understanding story is the first thing and after that on the basis of this understanding you are expected to answer certain questions now this part is uh, very important as per as your exam is concerned and this requires some special study once you understand the lesson you need to go in depth you need to read between the lines you need to analyze the character you need to appreciate the character and uh, it is again evaluating the character analyzing the character and uh, analyzing the actions situations this plays very important role in answering the questions for that you need to develop one skill and that skill is converting the information into answers now you need to read the questions carefully and uh, according to the questions you need to adjust your answers means whatever information is given in the lesson all the information is not necessary you need to pick out the necessary information according to the question fix it and change the words according to the situation this is how answers can be prepared the statements in the lesson cannot be written as they are the answer you need to make some changes in them you need to omit some of the things and you need to add some of the things of your own now how this thing is done this is the part we are going to discuss today so while forming answers of 30 to 40 words what things we need to keep in mind first of all uh, while uh, reading a question maybe we need to be very careful we need to focus that focus on two things mainly first is what is the wh word because wh word tell us tells us what is the direction of the question what is the information that is asked from you and second you need to focus on the verb because that is the action word that forms the main question along with that the subject of the question the tense of the question these things are also very very important so once you understand the question then the preparation of the answer begin now keep in mind the word limit of the answer is fixed when the question is asked that is uh, answer in uh, 30 to 40 words in that remember that your answer should be at least minimum 30 words are required any answer less than 30 words can be uh, insufficient so minimum 30 words is necessary you can write more than 40 words because the word limit which is given here it is clearly mentioned in the uh, cbsc that is uh, uh, the word limit given is minimum word limit if a student said anything more than that the answer should not be the marks should not be deducted from that so minimum 30 words is compulsory after that uh, you can write more than 40 words but again if you write 60 70 words that is also not good because uh, it means that you are not able to find out the exact answer that's why i written it more it also 
has one more impact that is you are wasting your time in writing extra answer so these two effects are there so to avoid that we need to write the answer properly means the appropriate length will be between 30 and 50 words if you write this much your answer will be appreciated so now before writing the answer think in your mind what are the things that you are going to write sometimes it happens that your answer is longer than what is asked the question asked may have longer answer so you need to judge what to be avoided what to be written sometimes the answer may be short you may think that this answer of this question is only in one line then how can i write in 30 to 40 words in that situation also you need to think and uh, you need to work accordingly means you need to provide some extra information about the lesson some comments uh, some other things about characters so that the necessary word limit can be met again uh, remember to take into account the tense of the question because the tense of the question is very important because according to that you have to adjust your answer i have seen that there are so many students who are quite careless about the tense of the question and they write the answer in all the tenses for example their first sentence is in present tense second is in past tense third is in future tense then add perfect tense then continuous tense all the tenses that is a complete mix up jumble of all the tenses for such answers if your answer is correct still you can lose half mark for writing wrong tenses so you need to pay attention to this also because losing half mark is also a great loss to us so tense is very important again one more thing that i have seen students uh, they are not careful about is uh, using the speech means in answer you have to use indirect speech it happens that in many lessons you have dialogues and uh, some part of that dialogue becomes the part of our answer then in that situation you are expected to convert that dialogue into indirect speech and then present it in the form of answer now example we can say if the sentence is uh, uh, i'm playing here then this answer when you are converting this uh, sentence into an answer you have to write he was playing there because when the character says i it means the character is speaking about itself when we change it into answer you are writing the answer and you are writing about the character in the story so if you say i it means you're talking about yourself so you have to write about the character he she or name of the character should be used in that place there are plenty of things that we can discuss but these are the main things of the answer that i have seen so many, so many students uh, they do mistakes in this that's why i have just reminded it to learn more about this we'll continue with the answers question answers and let's see some questions of from uh, your first lesson a uh, letter to god it is written by gl fuentes in the earlier videos we already learned about the lesson we have seen the story we have seen the theme we have seen the characters now let's see how some answers can be written now the first question that uh, we are going to see is uh, answer in 30 to 40 words and uh, I'm not going to discuss all the questions, but I'm going to tell you some important points that you need to keep in mind while writing these answers. First question is, what are the raindrops compared to and why? Now, you know the answer. This answer can be very easily written in 30 to 40 words. What are the raindrops compared to and why? You'll see that there are two parts of this question. First is, what are the raindrops compared to? What is the word? And you'll see the tense is present tense. This is a lesson which is written in past tense. So most of the questions will be asked in past tense. But this present question is in present tense. So to write in present tense. Again, for why, you can also use some sentences in past tense. Because the story is written in past tense. So you know that uh, the raindrops are compared to the coins. Smaller ones to the five uh, pesos coin and uh, larger one are for 10 and uh, Lencho compares them because 
so because of lack of rain his crop was about to be ruined and uh, as it started raining he thought that the crop would grow then and it would bring prosperity to him he would sell them so sell the crop and would get money so it was not raining drops it was raining coins because that was going to bring prosperity to him money to his home so rain drops are like coins according to him so this answer you can write now in exact words i'll just tell you what you can write in the answer you can write the answer uh, uh, like this when it started raining lencho was very happy he compares the big drops of the rain to 10 cent pieces and little ones to 5 cent pieces lencho needs rain for a good harvest if he has good crops he will get money that is why he compares the rain drops to coins now if you you count the words in the answer you will see that the answers answer suits the desired word limit so this is how you can write the answer the second question is why does the postmaster send money to lencho why does he sign the letter god again this question has two answer two questions why does the postmaster send the money to lencho why does he sign the letter god while answering this question you can tell something about the postmaster you can say that he was a generous helpful and god fearing person uh, when he received the letter and the demand for uh, 100 pesos he felt sympathetic towards lencho so he decided to help lencho he also didn't want that uh, lencho's faith in god is shattered and uh, he assigned the letter god in order to preserve the man's faith in god this is how you can write this answer the next question is uh, how far would you agree that one's positivity can bring in a spark of brightness even in adverse circumstances this is uh, a question which is based on values or uh, the lesson won't help you in this because you need to answer it by your own thinking such kind of uh, thought provoking questions are also asked so you'll see that uh, how far would you agree one's positivity can bring in a spark of brightness even in adverse circumstances it is definitely a true statement because uh, we know that when some people become positive that really brings brightness now in this crisis of corona we know that when some people talk good talk positive when you hear listen read some positive news that definitely brings hope to you and uh, you can also refer to the lesson here because uh, the positivity that the postmaster generates brings a hope and uh, uh, optimism in the mind of lencho and uh, that gives him support in adverse circumstances because the person doesn't lose hope when some person become positive next question is uh, what impression do you form about the postmaster after reading the story we know that the postmaster was a very important character in the story and uh, by the end of the day it was the postmaster who remember who keeps uh, us engaged in the story uh, you know in this answer it is like uh, telling about the character uh, now you should tell what impression you find he was a kind generous helpful amiable and god fearing person he was generous because he helped lunch with 70 pesos and uh, he also thought out of box and uh, he planned to help lencho it means he not only uh, thought but also executed his idea as well and uh, he uh, praises lencho for having faith in god so he uh, he is a person who appreciates other as well he encouraged people to uh, write about uh, to help lencho so he also encourages others to do something good so this is the thing that you can add in your answer next question is why does lencho describe the post office employee as a bunch of crooks in the answer uh, you can write lencho expected 100 pesos from god but when he received the money he found that it was only 
He thought that the post office employees had cheated him. They had taken 30 pesos from the amount that God had sent him because he had complete faith in God. He was not ready to believe that God wouldn't come to his help. But he calls them a bunch of crooks. But they were not crooks actually. But he considers them because he feels that they have cheated him. They were cheaters as they had taken their money. This was his thinking. Next is what is ironical about the ending of the story? What is the irony? As we have learned in the lesson, it is a, a very important part of uh, the whole story. Uh, you can answer like this. The end of the story is rather ironical. The postmaster was greatly impressed by Lencho's faith in God. He didn't want to shake his faith in God. He collected a sum of 70 pesos from the employees and contributed a part of his salary. However, his great act and charity was not recognized and appreciated by the man who received the help. Yeah. On the contrary, the helpers were ironically called a bunch of crooks. Means, the answer is no. The end was not according to the expectation of the postmaster. That's why it is ironical. So these are some questions which you were expected to uh, answer. One more question that is, do you think that people like Lencho really exist in the world? Uh, now this is a somewhat tough question because uh, we know that there are two kinds of people in the world. Now you have to take either one stand, either you say yes or no. I say yes, there are so many people in the world like Lencho who have complete faith in God. They expect miracles to happen and uh, they have complete faith in God because they think whatever happens it is because of God because of him so there are so many people around us who are like Lencho now the last question is do you think that the people like the postmaster exist in reality again this is same kind of question and the answer is again yes because there are so many people who do charity now you have come across uh, people like uh, Ratan Tata, Azim Premji, Akshay Kumar. They are donating generously for the purpose of Corona. They don't know whom they are helping, but they are still helping. So there are generous people and uh, these people are helpful in keeping humanity alive around us. So this is how we need to answer these questions. Now we are going to discuss some long answer questions, 80 to 100 words. Sometimes you can be asked to write them in 120 words as well. So these are long answer questions. Now for this, your analysis of the lesson is important. Reading extra reference books for answering them, it is also important. Now you can divide your answers into two paragraphs or three paragraphs according to the demand of the question. So now we are going to discuss some of the questions. Again, keep, keep in mind the tense, keep in mind uh, what is expected from you in the answer and then form your own sentences. Now, most of the questions which are asked here, they are value based questions, analytical type of questions. They are also based on characters. So preparing them well is also very important. Now word limit is again 80 to 100 words. At least 80 words must be written. You can also write uh, in 100 to 120 words also. More than that, it will be a wastage of time because you will not get extra marks for writing extra answer. So, let's see how we can deal with uh, this answer. The first question is, the postmaster represents such people who still believe in helping others. Mention those values of the postmaster which you would like to emulate. In this question, the first is just a statement. The postmaster represents such people who still believe in helping others. Now, the main part of the question is mention those values of the postmaster which you would like to emulate. Now understand the question. Aapko ye batana hai ki postmaster ki kaun si aisi qualities hai jo aap reflect karna chahte hai, jo aap copy karna chahte hai, ya kaun si cheeze unse seekna chahte hai. This is what you need to write in the answer. When I go through the answers of such questions, I have seen most of the time students end up 
writing only the story they just mention the events of the story sirf story likhne se aapka answer proper hone wala nahi hai aapko us story mein se main main points collect karke usko apne shabdon mein likhna padega now in this answer you have to tell what are the qualities of the postmaster and you have to tell that you would like to emulate them follow them like the postmaster was kind generous helpful amiable and god fearing person and uh, he also uh, was ready to help he was a philanthropist and uh, he was very sympathetic he decided to help lencho he sacrificed his part of salary he encouraged others to do uh, to help them he also encouraged other people to contribute and uh, these all characteristic tell that he was a person who felt empathetic towards others and uh, this is something that you would like to do there then he wanted to keep uh, lencho's faith intact in god and he also appreciates lencho for having faith he wanted to be like lencho and he wanted to have faith so uh, having tendency of helping others feeling somebody's uh, somebody's emotions and replying them positively these are the qualities that one must have and people definitely love such people so you need to tell i will definitely try to emulate the qualities of the postmaster the second question is show lencho's faith and confidence in god with example from the lesson so you need to tell here what are the evidences from the lesson uh, which show that lencho had great faith in god now in the answer of this question you need to write uh, some examples from the lesson now lencho thought uh, only of his one hope the help from god means when in a uh, distressful situation he expected help from god then uh, he uh, was uh, instructed by god by people that uh, god knows what a person thinks this shows that he believes in god again rencho lencho wrote a lesson related to god because that shows that uh, he had complete faith in god in he thought that god would definitely help him again when he receives the envelope with money he did not show a slightest surprise now this was the level of his confidence again he became angry when the money he counted the money and again he believes that god could not have made such a mistake and uh, denied him the amount that he had requested uh, he blames the post office workers rather than god so this all these things are enough to show he had complete faith to the character sketch of lencho now in this lesson you have two characters one is lencho and other is the postmaster you need to prepare these two characters uh, very uh, keenly so lencho is the protagonist of the story there are so many things about lencho you can write here uh, you can write he was a hard working farmer he labored like an ox uh, now in the answer of these questions if you quote some words from the uh, lesson then it will be helpful to you because the teacher will understand that you have gone through the le- lesson properly as he labored like an ox there was a sentence which mentioned this that he was ox of a man so if you mention he was an ox of a man that is very impressive he had good knowledge of farming and knew the crop needed downpour to give him yield so he was a good farmer as well lencho had great faith in god he writes a letter to god he expects help from him he knew how to read and write now uh, he is a person who was an uh, he believes in god he was simple and innocent farmer then uh, he also he blamed the post office uh, employees for cheating him and called them bunch of crook this shows this his simplicity he was a simpleton uh, he also took a lot of care of his family and uh, he was worried about his family uh, 
how what would happen to them if there would be no rain such uh, all round aspects of a personality can be mentioned here the last question is rancho described the post office employees as a bunch of crooks were they really a bunch of crooks how would you describe them the answer can be like this a crook is a person who cheats others uh, he earns his living by dishonest means lencho requested god for 100 pesos he received a letter in the mail when he opened it he found 70 pesos in it he thought that the post office employees had taken the remaining part of the amount that is 30 pesos so he called them a bunch of crooks this is the answer of first part now in second part but in fact they were very kind and generous people they did not want to shake lencho's faith in god so they raised money to help them uh they but they were unable to gather 100 pesos so they put the 70 pesos in an envelope and addressed it to lencho they were post office people they were good people they did an act of kindness and charity it was wrong for lencho to call them a bunch of crooks this is you know, something you can write here so these are the answers uh, that you can write try some answers of your own they will help you a lot we'll discuss more questions when we meet in the class thank you jai hind